Okay, everybody, welcome to OCD Hi-Fi Guy. Queuing up some tape here, because uh, we're going to listen to some tape while I go over this next little tutorial, a little adventure, shall I say. We're going to go on a... You know, i got to have a lot of patience and love for you guys to do what I'm about to do next, because I normally won't take my time to do this kind of thing, but I will, because... Um, I think it is going to be worth it. It's important to me to. Okay. See, that handles tape pretty nice, doesn't it? Let's see. Close. Yeah, let's see. I think we've got tones here. Okay, wait a second. Let me turn this on. What I'm talking about. You see the amp on the right? That's a 625S2. Okay, that's a $17,500 amp, okay? And um, it is um, 350 watts per channel at 8, and doubles down and whatever. Um, and um, it's an amazing sounding amp. It's actually the, the best class AB amp I've ever had in my life. And I love it. I just, I love both of them. I use a, it's a stereo amp. It's not bridgeable, but it's a stereo amp, and uh, I use it for lows and highs. So it's a 2 a bi amp over here. We've got the highs and then we've got the mids, you know, and all the way down to the lows. Well, actually, this is a lot of the mids. This goes down to 650 hertz. That takes it down to like um, 40, 50 ish, and then and then it goes off to the sub. So this is a two channel, and I use it for the for the main panel. Um, and what was I going to say about that? Okay, so you see how this is seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. This is three thousand dollars, right? The, the ones that I was talking about yesterday, and I'm, I'm, this whole. Thing that I'm doing right now is going to be to take my sweet time for those that really need to see and and, and have this shown to them um, that that this is not some stupid pretty box with with shitty electronics. Um, first of all, Jeff Rowland has a name to uphold, and so it would be utter professional suicide for him to bring something out and put shit electronics inside it. In, in, in an inexpensive box. That would just be completely stupid, okay? Um, so nobody in their own right mind that had a, a company of his uh, caliber would, would do that to their name and their history and their, and, their, and their reputation. You just wouldn't do something like that, okay? Um, what I want to show you is... You see the back of this? And the, the, the um, binding posts and... Everything, the, the, you know, printing and everything that's on there. It's the same level of quality. There is not any difference. He has a continuous quality level that goes from the top end stuff all the way down to the entry level. This is truly an amplifier that is designed to give people without the means for this a Jeff Rowland piece so they can enjoy it too and have something that is built to the same level that this is. It just has less features and it's not as powerful. Okay, this is one block of aluminum. This is also one block of aluminum. This is not just ordinary aluminum. This is a high grade of aluminum. They call it plate, okay? And it is a different structure than say a, um, what do they call it, um, um, extruded aluminum. Extruded aluminum has more inclusions in it and bubbles and stuff like that. So when this stuff comes in in raw form, the first thing the company does is they take and they cut a slice of it, of a big chunk, and they, and they, and they, ha and they, and they move it away, and then they look at a, at, a, at a side cut of what they just cut into to examine and see if it meets the quality standard. That's the first thing they do. Okay, then this... It starts as a, a, a block. They anodize it 100% black. So this was originally black on the face. They come back with the, with the machine, with the CNC, and then they mill this down to get underneath the black to expose the silver again so they can do this process on the front. So, again, now let me... The fact that this is one block also shows you that Jeff, when he's making this thing... Hang on. Um, it's a way to cut labor, and so it actually makes it 
less expensive if it's one piece because he doesn't have to put it on and have screws and have all this extra thing it's just it's just so it's it's this is something that was done as a way to keep it easy to produce keep it within a certain price point and still give you the same quality as the big dogs there's a little different finish on on these if we no let's see that one yeah that that has on the, on the very top of that but there uh, you, you, then that doesn't even have yeah see that doesn't even have the lines that this one has see those lines this doesn't have that <laughs> so it has something different it has these little you can't see them right yeah you see those little circular lines so there it's like record grooves almost uh, on that top there um so and this has the whatever they call them the waves okay um here's a nice push button that is um it's it's like a it, it's not a cheap switch let's put it that way there there are some like that that are cheap you can tell when you when we look at this it's not a cheapy okay so we'll pull this over what i'm going to do is um i'm going to open it up so we can look inside and let's pour over this bit by bit so everybody that speculates what's inside that's never really seen inside but they're just speculating let's see what's really inside and let's take a closer look so hold on a second and i'm going to open this up and i'll come back okay so one thing i, I want to point out before i open this up because um you know some of us were talking about comparing this to something else and i'm telling you i don't think there's anything that's this high of a value meaning i think more attention and care has been paired been paid to this amplifier than anything else even close uh, uh we're just going to keep it at the same price anything else for three thousand bucks there's i don't think there's anything that will come even like a farts whiff of a, dif a distance close like not even close okay so not even close do you get that not even close okay um delrin i <laughs> i don't know anybody who uses delrin on a three thousand dollar amplifier Okay, these are Delrin feet with the little um, with the rubber inlays. Um, but this is you can even hear it. You can hear the little telltale of Delrin acetyl. That is Delrin right there. It's expensive stuff. It's not just crappy plastic. This is as this is a, a, a serious polymer that uh, helps to damp high frequency. Okay, you only put those kind of feet on there if you really care about the person buying your amplifier. Now look, even the screws, oops, where are we? Come on, gotta go further back. Well, the screws, what I was gonna say is, oh, maybe I can do it like, yeah, yeah there we go. Okay, um, they're, they're all hex key pan heads, okay? Um, no, just regular old crappy screws. They're high grade machine screws, okay? This bottom plate is inset. It's not flat on top of this. There's actually a milled out piece behind here so that this plate sits down inside a channel. Look at the corner and you'll see what I mean. See that? That's not something you find on $3,000 amplifiers. I'm telling you, look at the bevel on the edge of the metal. You don't find a bevel like that. These are all little fine details that bozos out here are telling me that this is just a pretty chassis and blah, 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 nothing more. I'm going to show you how, first of all, we're going to go into the pretty chassis. I'm going to show you how really well done this chassis is because it's done at the same level of this. But what Jeff told me is it's really not that expensive when comparatively because he does 250 of these things at a time. So you go ask a machinist, a company that does a machinist, and you do 250 of these, you're going to get them at a pretty good price. That's what he does. He, he, he invests in his own company. He doesn't use other people's money. He buys deep on inventory so that he can give you guys good price. So now I'm going to pause it. I'm going to take all those screws out and we'll come back. So hold on. Okay, and here we are back. Okay. And so here we go. Again, I'm going to show you. See how this is machined out? Just to give that nice little... You don't have to do that. You could just put this on the, on the bottom. It would be less, cost less money if you did that, but nope. And he still gets them at a good price, evidently, from what he tells me. Everybody thinks this is some, it is a wicked chassis. I would guess it's retarded expensive, but he says it's not as expensive as you think because he does a high volume of them. 
I find it a thing of beauty. And some people don't give a crap. Some people, they just want a piece of stamped sheet metal with for their amp. Um, I'm not that guy. Okay, I have more pride in my hi-fi equipment than to just get some stamped out widget to put in there, okay? $3,000 is nothing for an amplifier, okay? Um, so if you're crying about $3,000 being too much, then this is the wrong channel for you, okay? This is the wrong amp for you because we're talking about hi-fi here. And it doesn't mean you need to be rich and it doesn't need, mean you need to buy the stuff, but at least give it proper respect when it's due. This is totally different than just the next old $3,000 amp. And I'm, I'm going through it now to show you how it is because I don't think you guys are aware. You're definitely not aware of what goes into it. You wouldn't be unless I did something like this and I took my time to show you, okay? This is a B&O Ice module. Some people think that that means it's a piece of crap. First of all, if you know B&O and you think B&O is a crappy company, you are nuts. You absolutely got your head up your booty because B&O has some of the most iconic design there's been in history for hi-fi. Some of the most iconic looking pieces that have ever been made. And I'm not saying they're the best sounding. I'm just saying from an aesthetic design standpoint. And yeah, even though it's aesthetic design and it's not, they don't sound maybe the best is the best in the world, but they look more beautiful than almost anything. And there's got to be given cred for that. So B&O has made a big part in history. They're a huge company. They've got deep pockets to do R&D. And because they do these things in such huge volume, they're able to sell them at inexpensive. And who cares? It doesn't matter. That's a great thing. Okay. That's why you can get this amp for three grand is because this module is not stupid expensive. Let's look closer. Look at this. Do you even know what this is? Do you got any clue what that is? I don't think you do. Okay, so that is Teflon. That is military spec. Teflon uh, uh, dielectric. Silver plated copper wire. I'm pretty sure it's SPC. Looks like, yeah, I know it's type E. But anyways, okay. This is, is this is not cheap wire. This is, this is like used in aviation electronics. It's very expensive wire. It's very good. If you don't, you, let's see what other $3,000 amp uses this, okay, that has a dealer network. Okay, let's look over here. Let's go. Let's, let's flip this around. Okay, what do we have here? We've got the output wiring. Is that long output wiring? No, I'd say it's pretty short. Looks like it's about three inches long. Very short. You want to keep those things short. Okay, so let's look a little further. Oh, now what might that be? Looky there. Well, I'll be gosh darned if that's not Lundahl Transformers. Lundahl of Sweden. Been making Transformers probably since, who knows, 18-something. Um, some of the best in the world. These are input Transformers. These are not cheap little crappy Chinese pieces. These are the best input transformers known to hi-fi. Uh, these are not off the shelf. These are ones that are custom made for Jeff. He has them tweaked and dialed so that they're perfect for this setup. And there's no way you're finding a $3,000 amplifier with Lundahl transformers on the input. I'll guarantee you. Okay, let's look a little further. What do we have in here? We've got a proprietary differential input. Okay, so that's a differential class A input stage. Okay, that is just as good as any as the circuitry that's in there. It's built to the same level. It's built to the same level of integrity. I mean, that's pretty easy to see. We've got a power supply over here. We've got our wires that, that come over that are nice and, and, and held together and kept out of the way. Here's our here's here's our switch. Okay. Yeah. Um tell me that that switch doesn't cost probably 25 bucks. Where are we? Okay, can you I don't know if you can see that. But there are there are set screws. This is not a damn piece of crap. Th those are screws in the back. Do you see that? Those are set screws. I'm trying to get this closer. Let me see if I can do this like this. There we go. Cool. Look at that. Okay? <laughs> That is not a cheap Chinese switch. That is a very nice, 
set screw where you put the wire comes in from the side. Let me see if we get a pointy thing. The wire comes in from, where am I? Okay, here I am. Wire comes in right from this side of this, slides into that hole, and then you screw the screw down and you clamp the wire. And that's how that works because solder has its own problems because it corrodes and it's lead and it's many different metals and it's not the best. Um, so, and then here we get a close-up on the, the wire, the input wiring, which is um, a mil-spec Teflon um, PTFE type. And we, I'm not sure this looks... Um, also, let's see, what does this say on, on the side? Let's see if we can see it. It'll tell us what it is in the, in the printing. It'll, it'll give a military spec, a mil number. Let's see if we can find it. We can see what it says. Nope, I can't see that without... Yeah, okay. Um, and then we've got, we've got, this is the switch for the, the mono, oops, mono and stereo, in stereo, okay, right here, so a switch, it's a very nice switch, no cheap quality, we're still looking around in here, we're going to poke around, um, these were the Lundahl transformers, I'll, I'll go around so you can see those again, um, okay, so kids, when you see, um, whoops, when you see that on your input, you know somebody really gave a crap about giving you the best they could do. This is most likely mu, mu metal or mu metal, however you want to say it, which is a nickel um, a nickel alloy that encapsulates this and keeps magnetism, stray magnetism, away from the other components. Um, we've got, let me see, what do we have over here? We've got a relay. It does relay switching, so no cheap O switch. There's a relay right there on the board. It's not located anywhere else, which they do. This is also part of the uh, the input stage. We've got a dip switch there, and that can be that can be. You can change the the um, the dimness of that front panel light. So if it's too bright for you, you can you can switch that and turn it down a little bit. You know, who 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 does that? Um, not many people, I'll tell you that much. Okay, what do we have here for our input, um, our IEC inlet? We've got one that is a, it's got, it's a dual voltage. And it has also got a, um, an effuse and it is, uh, let's see here, it might be, I can't remember if that's a Furitech piece or not. Um... I can't tell. Okay, so meanwhile, go across this board and see if we've got any other mods. So that's that's an upgraded cap for sure. This one here, definitely. Um, yeah, they don't put those in like the most cheapy things. Now, is this a... So this is... I don't know exactly. Okay, so we looked at, and we looked at the switch. We saw the switch on the, on the input. That's probably another little, that's a little transformer, I think, that one there. What does it say? Yep, T351, so that's a transformer. And these are other other transformers. Um, and you know what's really cool? This is a 250 ASX2, widely accepted as one of the most audiophile-sounding b &O modules there is. Um, and this is before that 600-watt, whatever the heck it is now that people like to talk about. 600 watts is stupid. But... Um, it's like, um, I guess you gotta have big power. You don't need 600 watts, just so all of you know, you don't need that. Um, if you have a hi-fi rig that's of any ilk. Um, okay, so um, what else? Oh yeah, so this is gonna show you that it's definitely milled out of aluminum. Like there's no question, this is one cavity that's been milled out. Okay, so um, <laughs> I don't know how to put this to you other than this is the nicest, highest level of implementation and build that you will ever find in a $3,000 amplifier. You simply will not find it anywhere else. And this means if it's sold for $3,000 from the dealer, this means Jeff sells a thing for a, little bit, for, for a little bit over half price. You know, this is a gift to the audio community. Don't mistake it for a second. Jeff did this as, as something to not leave out the person 
that didn't have enough money. He was thinking about, he's not just a jerk that only makes amplifiers for $17,500 and above. He made a $3,000 amplifier to not leave anybody out. And if you don't recognize that, I'll need to shake you because this is obvious. This is obviously done in a way he does. He's he is not counting profit on this. He this is a lost leader. This is something that he is doing just to be cool because he cares about everybody and he's not leaving anybody out. And I don't think that anybody realizes that with this amplifier. And I was looking at it the other night and I was like, wait a second, man. This thing has been in my face for months now. And it's starting to dawn on me what this piece is. This thing is a chunk of Jeff Rowland quality for three grand that anybody can afford. And it sounds unbelievable. Now, for those who think they're so smart, that think that they know that a P&O sucks, and it's, in just a, it's just a B&O in a pretty case, people like to say. And it's just such a parrot thing to say. You guys just repeat it after each other, and you don't even know what it means because you want to argue it with me in, in a gentleman's manner where we can, why don't you tell me, what is the about the B&O design that you don't like? I ask people that say that, well, well tell me what it is that you don't like about the B&O design, and what would you do differently? And they're stumped because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're just spouting off something that they heard somebody else say or they saw it written in a forum and that's all they're doing. There's no thought behind it. There's no integrity behind it. There's these bozos just walking around spewing out stuff out of their mouth and it's just like noise. It's like interference, you know? It's just don't get out of here, man. You know, go somewhere else. Go play in the street. So, um this is um anyway, so I wanted to do that to take the time here to go inside the Jeff Roland 125 and show you the quality because people are trying to guess it and talk smack. Now, what I was going to say is this is a 250 ASX2. It just so happens I made myself a 250 ASX2 before I even met Jeff. So we do have an amplifier that I made out of cheap ass thin sheet metal, just screwed in, and where I made my version, which is not going to be anything like Jeff's, but we can compare them. The identical board and i will show you the inside of that amp before we play it and we can i can you can look here and look there and and, and verify that they're the same damn thing and then let's hear how jeff roland does 125 uh, 250 asx2 versus how mikey does 250 asx2 and let's see and actually it wasn't me i hired an engineer to do mine and i'm not going to say who it is but i hired an engineer who knows his stuff and jeff is um a little more OCD the way I am in, in in doing his things. No no shakes to the other guy, but they're different, okay? And we will listen, and we will see. Does it make a difference? Can Jeff make something different? Does, does Jeff's 250 ASX in a box sound different than the other guy's 250 ASX in a box? And that's where the proof is going to be in the pudding. That's where the rubber is going to hit the road, and y'all can finally just let it go, man, you know? Give the guy proper recognition. Give the guy proper respect where respect is due. If you can't see respect is due for this type of a build, you're a numbskull. I mean, it's like, come on. How much more do you have to do to something to show you a beautiful build? And look, for the people that want a 125 ASX2 in a, in a freaking shoebox because they want to spend 200 bucks or something, 300 bucks, you're, th th we're not talking to you, Okay. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. You can have your DIY thing for $300, but we're talking about something completely different. So let's not compare because that's not what this is. This is 250 ASX2 taking to the max. This is as good as you can do it, not as cheap as you can do it. So if as cheap as you can do it is what you want, then go find that. This is not it. This is as good as you can do a 250 ASX2. So there's, you know, there are two different things. Let's, 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 let's remember that. Okay, so I am going to go and get my amp. I'm going to set it down here, and we are going to look at the two, and we're going to compare the boards, and we're going to see. And, and, and you can see two different amp builds, both using the same module from two different people. I didn't know him, or I'd never even seen this. Um, this wasn't even a, a, a around, I don't think, when I made my amp. Um, and, and we'll take a look. And once we verify that it's the same module, then we will go ahead and we will do a comparative test, and we can listen, and we can determine... How do they sound? 
Okay, so hang on one second, and I'll be right back. Okay, so enter the Virastar 500 watt dual mono. What I have inside here is I've got two of these. So just like Jeff's amps will bridge for 500 watts, I have them already bridged in here, and I just run them that way the whole time. They don't get any stereo version. They get, they get two of these modules bridged. Okay, and I made it in dual now. Now, what I'm going to tell you is, here is how a seasoned, uh, and, and a seasoned electronics engineer and designer designs something. This is how a marketer designs something. Okay, so you will see different, there is a clear distinction out in the, in the market between the two. <clears throat> and you will be able to determine them before too long. If you go right now and look, you, once I point out the cues of the difference between a marketer's piece and a real designer's piece, you will know how to sniff out the guys that are selling you marketing. This is me. And in, in, in this is the, the uh, prototype version, the very first production version. And I could not put it out because a product like this is beneath me. I'm too, I don't want to show this to somebody as representing my skill or my statement to the, to the audiophile world. This is a me too piece. Any jackass can do this thing, okay? This is something completely different. This is any, anybody can go out and get a module, put it in a box like you guys are talking about. That's this. This is something completely different. Okay. So what do I do? I'm a marketing guy. What do I do to sell it? I make a dual mono. How do I really show people it's dual mono? I got two switches, two power switches on the front because, and then you'll see when I open this up, there's a divider right down the middle that, that keeps the two from, and it's lined with Allendine inside here, which keeps RF so they don't. They don't mess with each other. Look on the back. I've got two inlets, two Furitech inlets, okay? Very nice, okay? So this is adding to the audiophiles. I know what makes audiophiles get all wet in the jeans, and that's one of them right there. Dual mono, the whole thing. Now, here are the binding posts. You know, if it's on, on a full production version, I'd have uh, WBT, WBT next gens. I'd have WBT inlets as, inputs as well. Now, this is something I added later because it, would, it, it gives it um, a potentiometer for the input so I can bypass a preamp if I want to because this was, came, became like a test uh, you know, thing where I could just take it in and out and I just if I didn't have a preamp, I wanted to be able to use it. So, um, okay, so this is how it's built in dual mono fashion, two fuses, two everything. It's basically... Two of these inside, or two two full amps inside one chassis. There's really no difference. Um, it, it, it's two amps inside one box. That's the only thing is I'm sharing a box. Um, so let me open this up, and I will be right back. Okay. So here we are. Let's take this off. And this is um, Aladine lined. So this is not um, something that... No, let me see what I have back there. Oh, yeah, okay. It's not something that is, uh, is done all the time. This is aluminum, and aluminum is not a shield unless you spray it with Allendine and you put that coating on it. So this whole thing inside here is coated with Allendine, which keeps um, uh, um, um, RF and, and EMF. It's a shield. It basically shields so that these two are kept separate from one another. Okay? Now, this is pretty freaking cool, you know? I mean, I'll bet, you know, I mean, I do it better than a lot of other people I've seen in the industry that put modules in a box. At least I had the the common sense to put in my whole own input section. I've seen where people just put in the module in a box, man, and they don't even try and put anything of their own in there. And I mean, come on, you're gonna go to market with something that's just a module in a box with nothing proprietary in it? Ugh, I feel sorry for those people. But anyways, here we go. This is how I, I did mine. There's transformers because I've got these are the Let's see, and then we've got these. I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't know how you ran these things. I'm not gonna try and explain the circuit because I'm not a damn engineer. Um, and, um, and I don't know exactly how he's got them set up, but these are what, what, when these get bridged, they become balanced. It's called bridge tide load. So that means you're single ended on this thing when you come in as a stereo amp. Once you bridge it, you need to come in balanced, it will accept no other input. 
So inside here, inside the amplifier, I change it from single-ended, which is on the back, RCA, I change it to XLR right here. I change it to balanced. This is called a phase splitter. This takes a single a signal and it divides it out into a negative and a positive signal, and then we've got ground. So it takes a two-wire thing, turns it into a three-wire thing, so it can run through this module. That's pretty cool because I can flavor it with the tube and then also do the phase splitting. Now, if I was going to be real purist and not monkey with stuff, because, see, I'm using a tube because I know it excites audiophiles. I'm using this from a marketing standpoint. I think a tube, vacuum tube, on my sheet, when I have my sales sheet, the fact that there's a vacuum tube in there is going to make it sell more to a person that just only gets turned, the, the people that don't know enough about circuits. They see a tube and they think immediately it's hi-fi and because it's got a tube, okay? Nothing could be farther from the truth, but I know this, so I'm going to use it to my advantage. What I really would do if I was really a purist is I would come in balanced and skip this whole circuitry because we don't have to go through this if I come in with an XLR like Jeff did. Jeff comes in with an XLR because he's a purist and he does it the right way. I came in single-ended and I put it through a tube because you guys don't know what the hell this does. You just see a tube in there and go, oh, cool, it's a tube hybrid. You don't know that this thing... I, sh I, I should have just come in here balanced, but I added circuitry to, so I could put a light bulb in there so it would glow when you look through those top uh, louvers and you saw it glow in there and you'd go, cool. And I could go, yeah, right? Okay, this is marketing, baby. Then what the, whatever that stage is, it looks like maybe some sort of a, I don't know what that stage is. Um, it looks like something, it's got to be, anyways, and then, and then we've got the, the transformer, which also aids in that, that's going back to the signal, no, that's just a power transformer, okay, so that's a, that's a power transformer for the power supply, um, okay, and then, of course, we've got the 250 ASX2, which you can see right here, so let's, let's put these, let's put these together, hang on a second, okay, and then this way you can see, we'll lay them right next to each other, and then you can see, so here, they're, they're, they're sitting in the same exact way, so can you see that, can you see that, Here's the um, the transformer, whatever whatever the hell's under here, okay? And then you see the two caps, and you see this transformer. Now let's go over here. Um, you see the two caps, the transformers, and then this block over here. You see? Maybe I need to do it like this. Let's see. Can you see? You, you can see how those are the same, right? Let me try and make it as easy as possible for you guys. Okay. Can you see that? It's the same thing, okay? So we've got the same module right here as right here. I'm gonna see if Jeff made anything. It's pretty, looks pretty much, you know, um, but you can see, you know, his output wiring and, you know, the output wiring in mine, they're a little bit different. Um, his input wiring is nice, beautiful like that. There's my input wiring, just those two little, these two guys. Nothing special. Um, and there's the tube, my magic tube. Okay? Um, and so we will compare these. We'll put this, uh, um, we'll, we'll put this in, uh, in the system, and we'll run it five. Well, it's the only way to run it. We run it 500 watts per channel, and then we'll run a pair of these bridged, and we'll see if there's a difference. And, um, and then you tell me, you know, can, can, can you see a difference? I mean, come on. Look at how this is done. Doesn't it look like a third grader did it? You know, I mean, it's like, look at those. I mean, just plain boards. I mean, it's cool because it's simple. It is a clearly, like, it couldn't be any more simple and DIY and just dumbed down, you know? It can sound really good with it. Because this, first of all, that's a great sounding module. I don't care what you guys say. You've heard it. We, I played this thing in here. And you put a new old stock tube up front to color the sound. And boy, does it make it pretty, Okay. Um, it's a great sounding module to begin with. Now, this is how a real designer does it. Stealthy Lundahl transformers. I mean, and look, this thing was selling for four grand. So I was selling this for more. Well, I guess it's got two. So it's, yeah, anyway, so this is half. It's, it's only got one. This has one module. This has two modules. Um, I, I, I was selling that for 4,500. 
I was that was the target price. I didn't sell it because I decided I can't have this be my example when I come to market. I can't show that as there's Mike Powell's amp. No, I have too much pride to do something like that. That is just anybody can do this and I would look like a regular bozo, which I'm not. I would have to do something much more proprietary and I'll show you. I don't have one here, but I'll show you the picture of the amplifier that I finally did. Um actually did it before this and then this was a different foray, but you'll see what, what when I decide to take something under my wing, I I, I, w- I would never do anything like this because it's just not innovative enough. This is too simply cobbled together to appease audiophiles. This is clearly a marketing piece. Anybody who knows design, any designer, any any electron Mark, or I mean um um uh Jeff, Jeff would look at this and immediately know what it is. He'd go, oh, okay, I see what he's doing. You know, he's some kid that, that, that you know barely knows how to put stuff together. He's got a decent, it's a sound circuit, it's not gonna blow up, but I can see what he's doing. He's trying he's he's putting in extra circuitry to uh make a tube glow so that people go, ooh, wow, glowing tube, and they want to buy it. Well, I'm not stupid. I'm a marketing guy, okay? Um but this is not giving any love to the market, okay? This is kind of fooling the market a little bit and kind of laughing a little bit and saying, ha-ha, I know what you assholes like, and I'm going to sell it to you, you know? And, and it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's not, it's, this is a marketing piece, man. And, and trust me, any piece that's marketed, they're kind of a, sort of, it's a game. They're saying, what kind of bait can I put in there to make the rat come and eat it, you know? So they make bait pieces. Basically, it's audiophile bait. You know, this is something, man, you got to know. So anybody that talks shit about this, it's clear they're dum-dums because they don't know circuits. They don't know quality if it hits them in the face. So I just know immediately when people talk smack about this, that they're just dum-dums. You know, they'd probably like this better. This would impress them more because it had a glowing tube and all that stuff. When really, this is the dum-dum amp, you know? So, you know, just slow down a little bit. And, 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 and just take it in and just look at the differences because they're clearly different. Look at the differences, you know? Can you see a different density to one? <laughs> yeah, I can see a lot. This is much more dense. This is much more loose and sparse and just taut. It, you, it's so clear that it took two seconds to figure that layout. You know, oh, put this here, put that there. This, they... Everything's perfectly tightly fit. This board here, every this took a long time to put together. This took a freaking afternoon, okay, and a couple beers. It's like, yeah, baby, okay. But this thing will get people more excited than this because y'all are attracted by shiny shit and tube stuff that glows, you know. But you don't take the time to slow down and look for the quality. So instead of getting the quality, you end up getting sold this kind of stuff which is the not the quality because it's been marketed to you and it looks shiny and pretty and we use it's a it's a hybrid blah 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 and I use all these big words to describe you know a stupid design that's just nothing big and then this guy over here who doesn't say anything he's just quiet but he's got the mac daddy for 3 grand and people just call it crap and it's a pretty box with the thing it's it's like so foolish it's like you're just like throwing the baby out with the bathwater Totally just being made an ass of if you think this thing is 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 a, is 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 overpriced, you know? How ridiculous a thought that this is overpriced. It is so freaking underpriced, it reeks of underpriced. I mean, if you can't tell that just by this channel, <laughs> just by this milled channel right here, if you can't tell that this is underpriced, just by this being the different color, okay, this is silver and this is black. You can see it's been freaking milled out. You know, that's a whole extra step of milling, man. And it's 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 um it's debossed yard. It's it's actually milled out to to give a nice little cavity for that to perfectly fit down there. Okay, is mine like that? Hell no. This is bent as sheet metal. Cheap too, thin stuff. You know, I mean, it's totally thin. It's light. It's aluminum, man. And then and it just wraps around there. Does it does it fit into a channel? You know, does it fit into a channel back here? Hell no. It just sits right on top of it, proud. Just sits just like that. Put a screw in it. The screw's got a big lump sticking out, you know, and it just folds over, you know? I mean, if you guys cannot tell the difference between that, come on, man, let's wake up. Look at this. There is no rear panel because it's milled out of straight aluminum. Now, you look here, 
and you see this plate that holds these outputs, okay? Do you know why that exists? Because he could just drill through this. There does not need to be that plate on there. Why would there be that extra plate? Why? Because in case somebody wants a different output, he can give it to them. He can pull that out. He can just mill a small piece, and it's very easy to custom make somebody's outputs if they want different outputs, if they want Neutrik, uh, twist locks, or whatever. He'll do it. And so he has, he has, he has um, appropriated for that. He has made the plate that fits into the nice little slot so that he can do custom outputs for people to take care of custom requests. Okay? And we go through here and we see this, everything else, okay? Does that look different than my rear panel? <laughs> oh my God, come on guys. You know, can you see a difference between that and this? Do you get it? Doesn't, doesn't this clearly look like higher quality? Because it is, it's totally high, higher quality. So just look and recognize that is high quality. This is bullshit. Okay, this is a science project. Okay, so um, I'm just trying to, to, to give a frame of reference because I know you guys are talking out your butt because you don't, nobody's taught you this, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I decided tonight, I'm gonna take the time. I normally blow you guys off. I don't have the time or the air or the wind to speak to people that don't understand electronics and that are ignorant and are just spouting off at the mouth. I don't have time for that, so I ignore it. Um, I am now taking the time to show you guys the difference because I figured, you know, it's just because nobody's taught them. They have no idea. So let me teach them. So that's what this is. I'm showing you the inside and how it is much, much different than a box with freaking B&O modules in it. Okay? So um, I'm going to go hook these up and then I will come back. So I'll see you. Hold on.